Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a good one. Today is gonna be episode two in our golden age of 4K series, and we're gonna be talking all about performance. Now, before we get carried away, let's take a step back and ask the question, why all the hype for 4K all of a sudden? For the last decade or two, 1080p has been the go-to resolution for all the different gamers out there. 3dcenters.org regularly tracks popular resolutions for entry-level, mid-range, and high-end users, and 1080p, it still has some steam left. Nevertheless, as graphics cards have improved, 1440p has become much more palatable for high-end and mid-range gamers. Along with higher resolutions, there has been a strong interest with enthusiast gamers for high refresh rate gaming, pushing their game's frame rates beyond the traditional 30 or 60 FPS. With more demanding resolutions and frame rates, companies are having to come up with bigger and beefier GPUs to accommodate. Nvidia, AMD, as well as Intel are creating new designs and making iterative improvements in order to power these demanding games. With this improved horsepower, 4K is becoming a much more lucrative upgrade for most gamers. The increased resolution provides more object clarity and definition in the details. That extra resolution allows textures and environments to become alive, objects to become more organic, and games just become much more immersive. Higher resolution and larger screens amplify the visual experience to the next level. Let's not forget that other digital formats have gone from 1080p to 4K and have kind of left 1440p in the dust as kind of an odd man out when it comes to resolution. But up to this point, gamers have only had access to a couple different performance tiers from AMD and Nvidia in order to satisfy that 4K urge. Until the second half of 22, 4K generally relegates to the high end, such as Nvidia's RTX 3080 and AMD's RX 6800 XT. On average, these two cards achieve the critical 60 FPS threshold in many games and become the standard for a great 4K gaming experience. However, if we want to go down another performance tier to like the RX 6800 or the RTX 3070, we can still get a pretty decent 4K gaming experience even in the most modern AAA titles. But we do have to cut a few corners in order to make sure those 1% lows are consistently above our target. Let's take a look at Cyberpunk 2077. At 1440p, all of the top tier cards can hit 60 FPS with excellent visual quality, so 4K is the next logical improvement for a gamer. Bumping up to 4K, Cyberpunk cripples all of the competition, proving that this game's visual excellence might be acceptable at 30 FPS. Without some form of upscaling technology, 4K might be out of reach for most cards in future looking games. Let's take a closer look at these two cards and see how both AMD and Nvidia's cards stack up in a bunch of different games. The RX 6800 nails 4K at 60 FPS in most of the tested games, with notable exceptions being Halo Infinite, Dying Light 2, and of course, Cyberpunk. From the green team, the RTX 3070 slips behind a bit, barely missing 60 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Valhalla, Forza Horizon 5, and Watch Dogs Legion. This might come across as a huge loss in terms of this particular video, but keep in mind the settings that we're using. All of the data I'm presenting today is coming from Hardware Unbox's latest GPU reviews, and they typically test the highest and most stressful of quality settings. Moving games like Halo Infinite or Cyberpunk to a lower quality setting might bring us a little bit closer to our desired 60 FPS threshold. As we also see in the Callisto Protocol, both companies provide excellent upscaling technology on this class of hardware. FSR or DLSS can easily translate their 1440p success to 4K resolutions. At first glance, it looks like 4K gaming is going to slip out of the grasp for mainstream gamers this time around. But guys, there's a new generation of GPU hardware that's currently in our labs and many more that are on the horizon. Nvidia launched their RTX 4000 series Ada Lovelace cards a few months ago, and their performance has pushed the limit on 4K gaming. AMD also has unleashed their RDNA 3 7000 series this past month, with the 7900 XTX and XT throwing punches at Nvidia's high end. With Forza Horizon 5, these cards are borderline with 4K 144Hz panels at the extreme preset. At the same time, Hitman 3 at ultra settings meets that elusive threshold. On average, these three cards break the 100 FPS barrier at 4K in the highest presets, giving us a 34% improvement with the AMD card, 
and 51% for the RTX 4080. This gives me high hopes for the potential RTX 4070 and the RX 7800 XT, but will this 4K excellence translate across the entire product stack? Let's enter the speculation zone. First, let's take a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here, we're running competitive settings at 4K resolutions. I've taken a sample across various generations of GPUs from Nvidia and AMD, but let's look at the green team first. The RTX 2000 series is at the bottom of the stack and it shows pretty decent scaling from the 2060 Super up to the 2080. Next is the RTX 3060. Surprisingly, we almost hit RTX 2070 Super territory with 56 FPS. That's a 12% improvement gen on gen and only loses to the higher class 2070 Super by 6 FPS. After that, the 3070. It has much more horsepower than its predecessor and smokes it by 20 FPS gen on gen. Now let's theory craft a bit. If history repeats itself for an RTX 4060, it should be hovering anywhere between the 3060 and 3070 range, which if you put that into perspective, that is a huge win in my book. And taking it a step further with an RTX 4070, that could be hovering right around the 100 FPS on average mark. That means four of the five standard SKUs from NVIDIA, the 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 series, all are going to be great 4K 60 FPS experiences in most games. Now let's look across the street and check out AMD's cards. The RDNA 1 RX 5000 series cards straddle the 60 FPS threshold here, which is already an excellent start for AMD's GPUs. Looking at the RX 6600 XT compared to the 5700 XT, we are already trading blows with the older generation GPU. With impressive performance of the remainder of the stack, it wouldn't surprise me that even the RX 7500 XT could be a capable 4K card. However, let's keep in mind that this is 4K at basic settings in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This might not apply frame for frame as other games and other quality settings. Still, these relative averages should line up with the general hierarchy. So those GPUs cover kind of the mid range. How about the low end? Will they be able to play at 4K? Will the 7600 XT or the RTX 4060 be 4K value champions? As I mentioned, all the data I'm showing is from games running extremely tough graphical settings. It is entirely plausible to see low-end cards running medium-ish settings and hitting 4K native gameplay at acceptable levels. Acceptable is of course subjective, but I think it's at least plausible. Take for example the 6600 XT and Red Dead Redemption 2. I've been working through that story and can reliably hit between 45 and 55 FPS using Digital Foundry's recommended settings throughout Act 1 and Act 2. A 30% improvement will bump me up between 52 and 65 FPS. Going over to Nvidia's team, I think that the RTX 4060 or a 4060 Ti like card, those would be great competitors when it comes to a 4K gaming experience. And to lock those 1% lows up, tack on DLSS 2, and that's going to be buttery smooth. Again, we are in speculation territory here, but none of the things that I've mentioned here are really all that wild. 30% is not unrealistic generation on generation, and I think that applies to a lot of these different cards. 4K gaming doesn't only apply to us PC gamers. Let's take a minute and talk about the redheaded stepchild of the gaming scene, the next generation consoles. They're advertised as being 4K capable devices, but they share many of the issues that the low to mid-range GPU see in our current generation. They honestly can't really handle native 4K. Typically, games on these consoles run at dynamic resolutions set between 1440p and 1800p, which sacrifices a bit of the pixel clarity of native 4K while relying on the TV or monitor to upscale the remaining pixels of the screen. Consoles also have access to various upscaling technologies, including checkerboarding or other engine-specific fixes. But many are starting to integrate FSR into their final shippable products. And some games in performance mode are throwing 4K out the window entirely, and they're going for the 120Hz experience. This typically comes in the shape of aggressive dynamic resolution scaling, which each engine and company has to implement in its own way. 
At the end of the day though, these next gen consoles behave a lot like our mid-range GPUs today, like the 6600 XT and the RTX 3060 Ti. Suppose you're willing to cut a few of the corners that the consoles do. If that's the case, mainstream PC gaming should be able to have a 4K gaming experience across the board, even if that stretches the definition a bit. With native 4K becoming feasible for about 70% of the products coming from AMD and Nvidia in this current generation, I think 4K is in a position to finally become mainstream. But 4K is not for everybody. If we take a look back at my last installment in this series, the increased resolution, in some instances, is complete overkill. If you're already in a sweet spot regarding view distance and monitor or TV size, the additional resolution is wasted and performance is just left on the table. I'm a huge proponent of 1440p and 144Hz, but I'm keeping an open mind. I spent the last month playing on my 4K 60Hz monitor playing both Modern Warfare 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2, and overall I've been able to adapt and overcome. Of course, I will report back when I switch over to my 120Hz panel, but I'm still enjoying myself. As for you guys saying that the RTX 4090 is saving 4K gaming, I don't think spending $1600 is the take you really want to stick with. High quality 4K gaming monitors are still extremely expensive, and that reminds me, we're going to be covering that in episode 3 of our Golden Age of 4K gaming video, where we're going to be talking about all of the costs included with gaming at 4K. And that's all I got to say when it comes to performance in the golden age of 4K. Let me know down in the comments if you guys think I missed anything or should have covered a particular topic. As we go into 2023, we got lots of more coverage here on the channel. Check out the Discord where I'll be talking with you guys about that. As always, you can follow me over at Twitter at TheTurk for the latest memes, news, and all that good stuff. But as always, thank you guys for sticking to the end. I hope you all have a great one. We'll catch you in the next one.